We don't have a relationship with Allah. You know when you have a relationship with Allah, like you know when you're in love with someone, you know, forgive me for the example, but for the sake of understanding, I know the example doesn't defeat. But for those that are married or maybe think of yourself when you were engaged. Those brothers that are, that are single now, you know, think of yourself, you know, when you find a girl and you want to marry this girl, right? Bro, your whole life is trying to get what? Her attention. No one, when they're engaged, isn't this funny, Rima? When they're engaged, no one asks what's my rights and what's her rights. <laughs> no. When do they ask her? When they're punching on. I got married now and he's ready to kill her and she's ready to kill him. Now it's all about you, but brother, what's my hat and what's her hat and we don't want to get it, we to get it. But when they're engaged, they never speak like that. Never, ever, ever. It's all about what, brother, I give. And you want to the grima and you want to, you know, and you want to shower her with love and flowers and this, that and the other. Flowers. I used to buy my wife flowers, bro. <laughs> yeah, I was one pocket like this. <laughs> when you have a relationship, that's what you're thinking about. Wallah, when you're in a relationship, you think. And it's love, man. Why Allah it's love? My mom till this day should buy me plums that she knows I like. One of them is so shift to the camp that will buy for the table and I bought it. It's love, man. What do you give Allah? Be real. What do you give Allah? I know myself, Habibi. I give Allah scraps. I give Allah rubbish. I give Allah what I don't want, what I don't need. Brother, come to the masjid. Well, brother, if I've got time. Just that language. Well, brother, I'll see. Yeah, and really, I'm busy, cuz. But heck, heck, if for whatever reason I don't have any time, yeah, I'm completely bored and there's nothing to do, then, well, brother, I'll see. I might come to the mosque. But you, oh, well, well, like, maybe I'm a wacker. You tell me. If that's the time I'm giving a while, what do you, like, what do you call that? It's spare time. What do you mean it's spare time? You go to work like a fahal, 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, like a monster, brother. When you go to the gym, he's standing in front of the mirror and he's doing these ones. Brother, best of his effort, when he goes to sports, when he goes, when he does anything, it's done with 3 million percent power. And then when he comes to the masjid, well, he's already yawning before he walks in. Look, well, we can laugh about it all day long, but you tell me, what are you giving Allah? <coughs> we give Allah scraps, scraps for rubbish, what I don't need. What, well, Allah, it's what I don't need, brother. I'll see, man, if I'm free. And then we wonder, well, you know, why is the condition of the Ummah, why is my heart dead, what I feel like? Bro, like, what are you, brother, the elephant's in the room. What are you talking about? You give, like, we give a lot again, so no one gets upset. Brother, I give a lot of scraps. Scraps. What I don't need. How do we give charity? How do we give it? Oh, what a calculation process. When it comes to charity, everyone becomes an accountant. <laughs> the same guy when he walks into Louis Vuitton, and he'll justify its mom. Remember that? I saw a guy in Green Acres wearing a Burberry bag. And he was driving the eight hundred dollar car. His bag was worth more than the car. But that's because in his mind, that bag is more important. Trust me, he knows what he's doing. But when it comes to Allah, and please, you know, I know the examples are funny, but don't take it too lighthearted to the point where you miss the point. But when it comes to Allah, everyone becomes an accountant. Allah, brother, I don't know, you know, and, you know, brother, look, you know, I need to be wise with my money. What are you, what are you talking about, bro? 
This is Allah Azza wa Jal. How do we give Allah? Again, my brothers, you know, forgive me, but bro, like if we're not real with each other, we're killing each other. Look at the calculation process. When it comes to Allah, everyone becomes wise. But when it comes to my soul, brother, stand the word. Uh, who cares? If, when we go as mates, right, and it comes to the bill, we're all fighting each other. We, we embarrass each other in the restaurant. Allah, Allah, eat the Quran and this and that. Brother, I'm paying for it. But when he comes, stand here and ask for donations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but downstairs you are killing each other. Who wants to pay for the meal? So please, bro, you be real with me. We give Allah scraps. When we come to give a donation, how do we give? Well, oh, 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 you know, look, you know, I need to for it. All right, brother, so how much rent? Brother, at least six months. No, oh, wait, six months. <laughs> six months? To be financially wise, the, the your brother, the smart Muslim is better than the dumb Muslim. Wow. Alright, so now he starts allowing for, and that's rent. Allah Allah was not even allowing for his mortgage come in. Anyway, brother, my mortgage and my rent, yeah, and brother, well, you know, I got rent coming up, brother, you know, I got enough for this, I got that. And fine, wallah, I know Rasim, bro. It's all important stuff, I understand. Brother, this and that, and this and that, and what about the shopping? What about what well, you start looking at the guy, you think, wow. And then the guy says to him, Allah, brother, you know what? My neighbor six doors down, you know, he has a cat, bro. How long? You know, the cat sometimes he comes. So, you know, brother, you know, I can buy a cat food. So, you know, what the hell? But he's announced for the cat six houses down! <laughs> now, after I calculate all this, now I look at what's left over, brother. Now, from what's left over, now we can calculate what from that I'm prepared to give on what. And that's the reality. Well, Lord, my brothers, please, man, you can, you can tell yourself what you want. Be real with yourself. We give on last scraps. And what do I want in return? What do I want? Brother Firdaus al Ala. You're like the guy that walked into the Ferrari dealership. He barely has enough money to buy a second hand Corolla. He says, brother, give me the red convertible one there in the corner. Get out of here, man. Dude, like, I'm, honestly, who are you kidding? <laughs> My brother, do I have to? No, you don't have to. Do I have to buy my wife flowers? No, you don't have to. But if you were in a healthy relationship, you wouldn't even ask that question. So Allah says, My slave keeps on getting closer to me by performing the nawaf and the things he doesn't even have to do. He keeps on doing the nawaf and to what? What a hadith. He keeps on doing the nawafin until I until I love him. What happens when Allah loves? He says, I become the eyes with which he sees. The E with which he hears. The head with which he strikes. I become the legs with which he walks in. And if he was to ever ask me for anything, I would give it to him. That's love, man. لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ what does Allah want? Allah wants your most beloved asset in your life. What is the what is the one thing that's keeping you away from Allah? There are many verses in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and give in charity, and the money that you give in charity doesn't decrease and but here the verse, the tone, the conversation, everything about it was just different. 
So Abu Talha is saying, O Prophet of Allah, you know I'm one of the wealthiest. And you know, O Prophet of Allah, I have lots of land. Lots of land. I've got lots of bits and pieces everywhere. And he was known, Mashur in Medina, he was known. He says, O Prophet of Allah, but nothing is more beloved to me. Yani of all of my assets, of all the things that I own, nothing is more beloved to me than Bayruha. Bayruha was a little garden that was opposite Masjid al Nabawi. It was opposite the Prophet's mosque, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So imagine this with me. He owned, imagine owning a piece of real estate right opposite the Masjid of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, This garden is my most beloved. This garden, the Prophet himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to visit the garden frequently. He used to visit it. He would go into the garden, sit in the garden, and there used to be a well. We're talking desert now. To have a well is something very rare and quite unique. And the Prophet used to visit this well, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he used to drink from that water. So now Abu Talha is saying, he says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, you know. But this piece of land, this Bayruha is my most prized possession. And it is nothing I love more than this. He says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I give it to you in Sadaqah today. And this is going to be the tone of our whole talk, my brothers. That don't fall into this trap of thinking that Allah wants my money. No. Hashalillah, Allah Azza wa Jal is above all things. Allah is not in need of something He gave to you to begin with. But this verse hit home for Abu Talha, and look at those that are really seeking something deeper. He comes to the Prophet, he said, what's Allah saying? Lam tanalul birra, that you will never attain this level of iman, this level of faith, until you give up that which you love the most. And my young brother, and my senior brother, this verse hits on. Because all of us, were all prepared to give Allah something. To some degree, everyone here is prepared to give Allah something. But what does Allah say He wants? Look how unique the verse is. Until you give up, look how Allah threw it back on the individual. Allah says, until you give up that which you love the most. And that's different for every person sitting here. I know brothers that will happily sign a check for whatever. I had this one brother once, he said, before you have was open check and he wasn't lying and he came back. He said, bro, whatever you want, I'll sign it. Some brothers, they're happy to give money. Just get off my back. Of the other things. So here Allah didn't specify. And here Allah SWT didn't say, you know, until you give a certain amount of gold or so. No, 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 no. Allah hit the nerve. Allah says to each and every single one of you, you will never attain them until you give up that which you love the most. And this is it, my brothers. It is impossible to have and maintain a relationship with Allah if it's one-sided, bro. It's so easy to come on deen. To come on deen is so easy. But speak to the senior brothers and see the challenge it is to stay on deen. Allah is saying, until you give up that which you love, the what's the most beloved thing to you? Allah wants it. Not because Allah needs it. Don't make this mistake. But because Allah wants to see what is more beloved to you in your heart. Him or anything else. Abu Talha says, Our Prophet of Allah, I give, I give you my most prized possession. Yeah, and he has nothing more beloved to me than this. Abu Talha could have given six, seven, ten pieces of other lands, ten pieces of land and given. No, but Abu Talha knew, bro, all of them. Don't hold a candle to this one piece of land. He knew, he says, Our oh, Prophet of Allah, this is my most beloved. And if Allah wants me to give it up, 
then so be it, he gave it up in charity. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does he say to him in return? He says, what a successful transaction of Talha. This is it. Why? Because it has to hit where it hurts. And we all want a relationship with Allah, but we don't want it to hit where it hurts. We want the relationship to be what? Cruisy, bro. Keep back. And it's impossible, right? Really, just think about today. Think about our trials and our tribulations. Your son gets sick and you start thinking, why me? Habibi, he's got a flu, he's got a flu, like, it's no big deal. It's a couple of days, a bit of uh, honey and a bit of... What's the... Right? The whole family goes into lockdown, breaking down. Our hearts, our hearts are so weak. Any test, any test now. Become huge, bro, huge. People come to see you, they're breaking down, brother, you don't know what I'm going through, and so on. Any test we're given, and it's shaking us to the core. Ibrahim waits, now he sees the dream, now he sees the ru'ya, and he knows as a prophet, the ru'ya isn't something, well, uh, maybe there's a difference of opinion in its interpretation. He knows it's working from Allah, it's revelation. We go through some little financial difficulty and when we're in places we don't talk about, in the heart of hearts, what do we think? What do we think? You know, not that we intend it, by Allah, I don't mean this, not that we intend it, but I've heard brothers that say words, and I know he's not conscious of it, but they're words of kufr, straight kufr. Now of course he's not disbelieving or but because he cannot comprehend his current test or his situation, but he starts saying words of kufr. And doesn't Allah have anyone else to pick on? But you know, if that's if that's really what you're thinking in your heart, you're in a dark place, man. And I've heard this common, common, very common. I can't ask him anymore. He's a professional counselor. I think there's like a code of conduct he has to abide by. Right? But very common. And what, like, of all the people, Allah chose me to pick. Like, it's almost like a zifu. No, what, what are you, brother, what are you talking about? So now Ibrahim alayhi salam, look at this here. You know, he comes to his son. He says, what do you think? His son is He says, our father, do as Allah orders you to do. And you will find me of the patient. Allah, I don't have time, I would have dissected this story's done. Is that all? <laughs> By Allah, if your dad said to you, Dad, I saw in my dream that I gotta kill you. Oh, right. yeah, you had too much, I'll give you last night, bro. What the hell is that going to do me? The man's tripping it. But such was the Iman of his people. He says, My father, do as you've been told, and you'll find me of thee. The patient ones. So then when he came, imagine the psychological trauma, the process of having your son sit while you're sharpening your sword, your knife, you're sharpening it so that it doesn't become, it's not, you're trying to lessen the blow on your son and your son's watching you sharpen the knife. And you're sharpening this and you know that Allah is telling you to kill your son. You waited 80 years for this. And so now he's sharpening his knife. And then he comes to his son and he grabs him. And then his son, look at the amount of these people. And then his son says to my father, turn me around. Meaning don't look me in the eye. He says, I fear that if you look me in the eye and you come to put the knife on my neck, you may have a moment where you might hesitate. You may look me in the eye and you may hesitate. He says, so turn me around so that we don't make eye contact. And do what Allah's ordered you to do. And still now Ibrahim, now he's bringing his son. And nothing, but there's no angels, there's no nothing to tell him that Ibrahim, don't worry. He doesn't know. He's been giving the order. Well, Lord, my brothers, I know we've heard the story a million times, but just for the life of 
But like try to live it, try to live, you know, you know, it's just it's so easy to just say, yeah, well, brother, he's a Brahim alayhi salam. When you do that, you kill the whole story. No, you kill the whole story, you kill it. Ya Allah, why are you doing this to Ibrahim? Of all the human beings on earth, why his son? Anyway, he grabs him, he puts him down, and look at the process. He puts the knife to his neck and runs the blade. Didn't cut. Then he ran it again. It didn't cut. Then he ran it a third time. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ibrahim, you've passed the test. We don't need your son's life. But لَمْ تَبَالُ الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِنَّا تُحِبُّ You'll never reach till you give up that which you love the most. We want deen. We want deen. But we don't want to pay the price. We don't want to pay the price, bro. Everyone loves Allah. Look, look, look at this. Everyone loves Allah. But no one loves Deen. Everyone loves Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But no one wants his sunnah. Everyone loves Jannah. But no one loves death. Everyone loves money. But no one wants to work. Everyone loves women. But no one wants to get married. Everyone loves children. No one wants to father. It doesn't work like that. Allah wants, not your money. Allah wants what's the most beloved thing to you. لَمْ تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّةِ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ Until you give Allah that which is the most beloved, you'll never attain them. The Prophet wasallam, and this is very important, so please stay with me, don't lose the point. The Prophet wasallam tells us of a man from Banu Israel, authentic hadith, a man killed 99 people. After 99 people, he, he wanted to change them. You know? In our language, so I want to pull up, you want to make a difference, I lost them. you know, I've had enough. So he comes to the, it's a long story, he goes to a man, he says, look, you know, is there Tawbah for me? The man says, you've killed a hundred, you're crazy, Allah will never forgive you. So he killed him too. Made him a hundred, right? Made him a hundred people. After a hundred people, bro, this guy, he really wanted Tawbah, he really wanted to change. I know, I know brothers that are on a very bad habit. Allah, he speaks to me, and he's crying from his heart. He's not crying from his eyes anymore, bro. He's actually crying from his heart. Bro, I'm in a dark, dark hole. I need help. And we all want to change, right? To some degree, every one of us wants to make a move, wants to make a change. Allah, I get it, I understand. But it's the equation. We want Allah's love, but we're not prepared to give it up. We're not. So anyway, the man now kills a hundred people and then now he comes to a scholar. So the people, they sent him to a scholar. When he goes to the alim, he says, look, I've killed a hundred, can Allah forgive me? What does he say? He says, my brother, who can stand between you and the forgiveness of Allah? Of course Allah can forgive you. You know, we're all amazed with, but we missed the point of the whole hadith. The man says to him, what? What does the scholar say? He says, Allah can forgive you. But for you to change, and this is it, this is the whole point, my younger brothers, please bro, will I speak to you from my heart? From my heart, I beg you, understand this hadith. We get our deen, we get our lessons of all of life, we get it from Quran and Sunnah. Trust me, there's a lot of people who talk and use nice fancy words, but all of your life, it's in the Quran and it's in the Sunnah, trust me, it's all there. The man really wants to change. He's killed a hundred. And he's asking the scholar, can Allah forgive me? The scholar says, yes, Allah can forgive you. But, but, for you to change, you have 
to leave your town. There's too much evil there. That's our problem, brother. I really want to change. The Habibi, your mate, he's no good. My brother, we've been mates for 10 years. What do you want me to do? That's the problem. You're not prepared to break up from your mate. You're not prepared to leave the air. And you know, sometimes it may be an extreme thing. Sometimes in order to save your soul, to save your deed, you may have to leave town. Have you been leaving? By Allah, it's nothing but an area code. <coughs> if it means saving your soul, do it. But that's the problem. Wallah, I really want to change. But what do you want me to do? This is all I know. I know brothers that are doing haram. Yeah, he's buying and selling haram. He's on haram. But it doesn't matter. Wallah, I know it's haram. And I know that all the income is haram. And I know I'm feeding my kids haram. But if I give it up today, what do I do tomorrow morning? It's all I know. That's the thing. You can't come to Allah with baggage. Brother, Allah, I love you and I love Deen. Tell me what the talks are. What about when we do talks on Tuesday? Ah, oh, I can't do Tuesday, man. Why not? Well, my brother, we've been playing out of me for the last 10 years. <laughs> well, why do you think it's funny? I genuinely get that from people. Well, my brother, we have our family, but you know, we have our family, uh, family, family barbecues on Tuesday, Sheikh. What do you? The brother, like, like, I don't understand. What do you want? Do you want the whole world and the whole deen and Allah and His Prophet? What? Do you want all this to change a note to cater for you? Doesn't work that way. Do you give up what you did? You, you, you're the one that needs to make the move. The scholar is telling him, yes, Allah can forgive, but you need to move areas. This town that you're in, it's toxic. Wherever you look, it's calling you to haram. The brother, I don't understand. Brother, I want to change, I want to, you know. And then he wakes up in the morning and the first thing he does is he's looking at his phone. Habibi, Allah, when you're sincere of changing, girls from 10 years ago will start contacting you. Shaitan is working around the clock. But, they, but you're not prepared to give up the phone. And you're not prepared to give up your mate. And you're not prepared to move areas. And you're not prepared to move your alba, me and I, so that Allah can come to the... To, 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 I don't understand which one is it. Which one is it? He says you have to leave. So the man packs up his bags and he leaves. He says you have to go to another town. There's good people there. They're going to guide you to good things. So the man packs up, he leaves. On the way, on the way he dies. Imagine that. On the way, he dies. So the angels of Rahmah come down and the angels of punishment come down. And there's a dispute between the angels. Who's going to take him? The angels of Rahmah said, this man made Tawbah. The angels of punishment said, no, no, he was on the way to Tawbah. This man's killed a hundred people. Imagine. Allah Azza wa sends down a third angel to be a judge between the two. And says to the angels, measure the distance of the <coughs> earth. If this man is closer to the town of sin, yani because he was going to the town of good, he says, measure the distance. If he's closer to the town of sin, then let the angels of punishment take him. But if he's closer to the town of good, then let the angels of rahmah take him. They measured the earth, and unfortunately for him, guess where he was? He was closer to the town of sin. So Allah Azza wa Jal orders the earth to change its dimensions. Is that normal? <coughs> Allah orders the earth to change its dimensions until He made in one hand span closer to the town of Hud. This is a man that didn't pray a single rakah, he didn't make a single sajda. All he had was a genuine intention. But it wasn't the intention, it was the fact he packed up. It was the fact he took that road. And that's why, that's why my brothers, if you die on the road of trying to memorize the Qur'an, Allah will resurrect you as a hafid of the Qur'an. 
If you die on the road to Hajj, Allah will resurrect you in your ihram, saying labbaik Allahumma labbaik, even though you didn't get there. Why? Because you were on the road. You weren't that guy that was sitting on the wall thinking, yeah, bro, that'll be hectic, but wallah, you know what, I'll see how I go. We ask Allah to make us of those who build a relationship with you.